will make an opening statement and then we'll go into questions. Please raise your hand and I will call on you. Coach. Third Saturday in, in October, college football is as good as it gets. Uh, man, Neyland Effect, our fans, elite, elite performance from them all night. Appreciate them hanging in with uh, us on the offensive side of the ball when we were struggling. Um, what a performance. Um, defensively, just absolutely elite performance, line of scrimmage, controlling the quarterback, um, everything that uh, you had to do going into it. Did an unbelievable job on third down. <clears throat> Offensively, man, not good early, not far off. Um, man, everything's got to tie together. We've got to be able to run the football. Um, got to continue to improve, but love a lot of what I saw in the, in the second half. And, uh, you know, special teams, solid performance at the end, some things early that we got to be better at. But said it was, a, it was another prize fight. You got to answer the bell. These guys answered the bell every single round and uh, go, to, go to battle with these guys any day. Um, man, just another great night uh, on Rocky Top. So open it up for questions. David, did Patrick? Uh, Josh, what's your thoughts on, on the offensive struggles in the first half of the last few weeks? And what is it like to, to win a game when those are happening to you? Listen, wins are wins in this league. Every Saturday in this league, margins are tight. Um, you got to be on the right side of the scoreboard. Uh, you got to be the best team on the field. That's our goal. Uh, our goal is also to become the best that we can offensively. You know, Nico's got to settle in a little bit earlier. Some things down the football field that uh, we got to execute. Run game, we got to execute the blocking part of it and um, pass protection too. So, I mean, the first drive, again, just like last week, we're moving down the field. We're in the plus territory. We end up fumbling on, on the 20 yard line. Like, it wasn't it wasn't pretty early, right? 102,000 saw it, everybody on TV. We did too. It's not that far off either. And, and uh, that's why you need to appreciate it when, it, when it's going really well. Um, and you gotta be on the right side of it as a competitor. And, and we gotta find a way to start faster and, uh, and be better. Josh, uh, Nico had the interception, the hit, the knock him out for a play in the first half. He comes back in the second half and, and plays better. What did you learn about him in this performance? From tonight? <clears throat> Young quarterback, it's going to continue to get better. Guys around him got to help him too, and that means just doing their job at a really high level. Um, but to me, like quarterbacks, it's toughness, it's mental toughness. It's when it matters the most, how do you perform and how do you control the game? And, and there's a lot of things, just physical, mental toughness that uh, really like tonight. And obviously there's some things we, we got to get better at and, and him too. And, and uh, you know, we'll keep pushing for that. Rob did Ben. Coach, you talk a lot about the resiliency of your team. You talked about it last week and tonight. And, you know, what did you see from them at halftime and the resiliency <coughs> they showed in the second half? And halftime, um, nobody blinks an eye. They got competitive composure. Understand that we got to make some adjustments. We got to go execute. We got to go do our job. But inside the locker room, man, you talk about guys that have belief, confidence, and, and trust in one another and continue to play for one another on their side of the ball, on the other side of the ball. It's awesome. And uh, you know, it's a, the culture that you want to have inside your locker room. It's really special. Josh, how fitting is it that Will Brooks, the Alabama native, the Birmingham yeah. native, gets that interception there at the, the end? And, and what did you see on that play as well? Yeah, you talk about a journey, journeyman. And uh, coming out on the other side of it, guy that continues to just invest every single day, and you reap the rewards. And that'll be a moment in uh, his life, and I'm sure he'll tell that story to all of his grandkids and great-grandkids and anybody that will be able to listen to it, you know what I mean, as, uh, as he continues to grow older. But uh, what a special special player, but really just a special young guy, you know what I mean, young man. play that he made on the corner? Yeah, I was on the iPad getting ready for next offensive possession if needed, so I didn't even see it. 
Boy, I sure like taking the knee at the end of the game, though. Steve, and then uh, David Pasco. Coach, I, I was hoping you could speak to your offensive line. For most of the night, it was a clean pocket, and that just what they did <coughs> tonight. Coach. Yeah, early, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, we were uh, – they were playing on edges and, and pushing it a, a, a little bit. Uh, misidentified one of their their protections, and you know Nico's scrambling around on, on the back end of it. Uh, some guys that are going to be open on on the back end, you know, in the secondary. Um, run game not good early, um, but second half resiliency, physical. I'll take uh, take that part of it for sure. Josh, you think about the game you won here two years ago, 52-49, and you think about this, rushing for 217, holding them to 75. There, there have been years where Alabama did that to Tennessee. I know you touched on the defense, but just what did, what did that mean, and, and did you think you could hold an Alabama running game to 75 yards? This group believes that it's really good. And uh, if they play 11 guys together and play physical, that uh, – they got a chance to be really special, and uh, you know they played really well tonight. Um, this this team's got a, a lot of confidence. They also know that we got to improve. Um, but uh, on a Saturday night, at the end of it, no matter how we got there, they're able to appreciate a win, which I think is really important in the landscape of, of college football. And you know, as a program, you know when we got here, I never. Talked about it because at the end of the day, nobody cares. Right? They care what the scoreboard looks like each week. Um, but there were obstacles that, as a program we had had to navigate and overcome. And, and uh, this coaching staff, the administration, our players um, did it in a pretty special way. Uh, not perfect, but a uh, pretty special way. And, and uh, you know, as, as a program, we got to improve this year. But um, – I do really just feel like we're just getting started as a as a program. Brent and Adam. Yeah, kind of a follow up. Just what Tim and, and that side of the ball has been able to do all year. I mean, you talked about it after NC State. Did you know that they could be this this good and, and control games the way they've controlled them? Thought we would have a chance to be a really um, cohesive. Unit 11 guys tied in, be able to play all three levels of the defense together. The depth up front would give us a chance to be good at the line of scrimmage. How some of our young guys on the back end would grow and develop would be critical. Um, Tim and our staff have done a great job. You know, I just talked about some of the obstacles when we first got here. Done a great job of, of uh, you know, personnel, scheme. Just continuing to grow uh, the young men over there, and, and uh, you know, special, special performance tonight, man. That's that's an elite defensive performance. Josh, there's only a few experiences like this: <coughs> rivalry, field storming, cigar smoking, all that. Um, most schools don't have anything like this. What are your feelings toward the players that have done this now twice, and the young players that get to do it for the first time? Uh, first of all. All of our former players, Darnell Wright, Elante Taylor, I mean, so many guys that were back tonight to be a part of this. Um, you know, AK. I almost forgot. AK. Um, they've helped build this thing and, and still cherish and love it and give back to it. Um, unbelievable to have them all be back tonight uh, and see what it means. And, you know, that you're a ball for life. That's not just words. Um, you know, for it to be the second time, like this program, when we walk on the field, we feel like we're good enough to go win every Saturday. Um, does this one matter? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, you know the historical nature of this game, what it means to the fan base, what it means inside of our walls. Um, and, you know, in the new landscape of the league, you know, what it means, too. And, and uh, you know, expectation was to go out and play great football tonight. <clears throat> Did that defensively for 60 minutes, offensively. 
we're on the right side of it enough, special teams enough. Um, and, uh, you know, great, great win. They're, it's, uh, you know, we've won in two unique ways the last two times here in Neyland that uh, I don't think our fans, but our players, I'll, I'll remember for a long time. There's nothing better walking off with, uh, off the field with the crowd surrounding you and a cigar in your mouth. Coach, obviously there's things that can always be critiqued in any game, but can you talk about the joy of now having beaten two of Tennessee's biggest historical rivals? I mean, there, there's got to be a lot of joy in that. I uh, joy in being on the right side of the scoreboard each Saturday. Uh, you know, those are, they're two big games historically, our fan base, what it means to them, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, uh, to our players, it's big games because it's it's league games, man. And uh, understand what it means and the things that you're trying to go accomplish and what you've been working for since January. And uh, you know the the last two weeks on that field, it's just the it's really special because of what it took to find a way to be on the right side of the scoreboard with all the ups and downs. Just continuing to compete. Um, proud of the guys for that. Paige. Uh, Jermon McCoy's interception earlier in the game returned it, I think, for almost 50 yards. Yeah. I'm looking back, how crucial and pivotal was that interception? Huge play in the game. Um, you know, changes the way the game's played from there on out just because of the score. And offensively, got to go do something with that. Um, but uh, again, just you know, third down defense, red zone defense. Special, special performance and, you know, offensively. Just <clears throat> we can't hurt ourselves when we're in the red zone. Red zone. If you don't get seven, man, you got to get three. You can't do that all the time either. That will get you beat. Um, but we find a way not to do any of those things for the early part of the game. West and David O. Coach, how important is the corner <coughs> A corner playing the way Jamal McCoy is right now, how important is that in the space game, just what he's able to do? Jamal, Ricky, Jalen, when he's in, like, it changes what you're able to structurally do defensively. It changes the game for the coordinator. It gives you the ability to open up your playbook. Josh, in a new season like this, how much do you talk about the expanded playoff with your team, and how much do you think about what a win like this can do for, for the road to that? Yeah, uh, our guys are aware of, you know, I mean, like, I wish I could put blinders on them. You know, that's not real. Uh, whatever the TV is going to have on the bottom of the ticker, you know what I mean? But <clears throat> for us to have a chance to be the team that we want to be, man, it's about being in the present. It's about competing as hard as you can every single day to grow and play the way that they're capable and then the unit is capable of and, you know, there's still things on defense. Man, there's a lot more things on offense that we got to clean up. Like, good teams get better, you know? And uh, this team's got to continue to get better. If it does that, they'll have a chance to be a good team. Last two, Ben and then Dylan. Josh, another special performance from Dylan, especially there in the second half. What, what allowed him in the running game to, to get going? And just, again, kind of two weeks in a row, feels like that performance <coughs> epitomizes who Dylan is. Uh, epitomizes him as a, as a competitor. <coughs> it's the cigar, all right? <laughs> um, he's special. Just feel the ability to run, get out in space, put his, get behind his pads. Um, we blocked a little bit cleaner in the second half. Gave him an opportunity to get started and, and created some plays and, and – uh, so resiliency from him too, you know what I mean? Gets banged up a little bit and you know fumbles early, but just comes comes back and keeps competing. So huge part of the game tonight. <coughs> Judge, the run game in the second half, and is that halftime adjustments? Is that you wearing people out? Is that really some half some 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 halftime adjustments, some just straight execution. And then as you get going, the ability to to physically move people, you know what I mean, as the game goes on. So combination of everything. Capable of being a lot better early. All right, thank you, Coach. we got players right outside here. We'll bring them up here in two groups. <coughs>